this review probably won't be very long, so just have a seat real quick, and then I'll get you guys on your merry way. So I just watched the new Salem's Lot on Max, and, you know... <sighs> I'm going to keep this spoiler free because I never want to just divulge the things I don't like about a movie in too much detail to avoid people from going to see it. But the reality is, this is probably my least liked movie I've seen all year. I did not enjoy the Salem's Lot 2024 movie on Max. You know, every now and again when these movies can, like, hang in limbo, you wonder what's going on. Maybe, you know, the suits up high don't think it's good, but in actuality, it's actually really good because it's unique, it's original, it feels authentic. And other times you find out pretty clearly why something was just held off from being released for so long. Now, I love the original Toby Hooper Salem's Lot movie. Now, I know it's really a mini-series, and, you know, I understand why it's a mini-series. There's a lot going on in that story, and there's a lot of intricate details that were discussed and are integral to the story. And this movie is right under two hours and cuts out so much stuff, but the interesting thing is the exposition and things that are cut out of it, to me, were just so abjectly important that it was remarkable to see how they edited this movie down. If you've seen the original movie or read the book, I would have to imagine you'd be left scratching your head at so many decisions that were made with this. And I'm not going to be too dramatic and say, oh, well, Toby Hooper's rolling in his grave or Stephen King is just burying his head in shame. As a big fan of the original and even a fan of the Rob Lowe miniseries, this just wasn't it. I couldn't help but shake the feeling of this whole movie just feeling kind of fake. And I even had a couple people tell me that there's actually not as much CGI in this as you would be led to believe. And I have no reason to argue that, but then still, why does the whole movie just look so glossy and fake? I get the sense that I was watching this computer-generated film the whole time, and it's not necessarily that the acting is bad or anything like that, but it never reaches a level where you feel like you're really getting lost in this scary movie. There's such this beautiful, dark undertone to the original Salem's Lot movie that is completely gone from this. To me, the whole movie felt like it lacked any sort of real personality. The question that becomes, who is this movie really made for? I don't know. I mean, obviously, the people that like it can vary. They could be adults, kids, teenagers, who knows? I just feel like as somebody who loves the movie and has done the audiobook of the original Salem's Lot and even likes the Rob Lowe series fairly well, that just, this was not for me. It's not like you can't readapt Stephen King stuff today and it not be good. I mean, clearly the movie It from 2017 revitalized Stephen King a lot of ways and made him more popular today than he probably was post-2017. But this just feels like it was a badly edited film that just lacked any sort of substance or soul. I mean, Barlow looked okay. I can appreciate the fact that they kept with the old-school Nosferatu look, but even that just led me wanting to look up pictures or go back and watch the original. But would I rate Salem's Lot 2024 on a scale? I don't really know. Probably somewhere between two and two and a half stars at best. I say this, go check the movie out for yourself. Maybe you'll like it. But in my opinion, they should have either A, gone back to the drawing board, or B, turn this into another mini-series, maybe with four or five episodes at 45 minutes to an hour each, and just let the whole thing play out. But that's not what happened. So let me know what you guys think about Salem's Lot 2024 down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.